So what we're going to be looking at here is why or how. Sure, let's go for how instead of why. How, how do animals, how do social animals recognize kin? What's clear is it does not take a very fancy organism. And there was a great example of this, which I think I stuck in the extended notes last minute, a paper published just a couple of weeks ago, looking at deer mice. Deer mice, and much like their vole cousins, if they are cousins, some deer mice strains are monogamous and some are polygamous. This appears to be a frequent theme in these little rodent things. And with the deer mice, what you find is with the polygamous ones, one female mates with a bunch of males. And as a result, one female will have sperm from a number of different males afterward in the vagina. And what you get is evolutionarily from all the rules we learned by now, perfectly logically, you get intrasexual competition between the sperm from the different males. We already heard a version of that with the flies back the other week there, where the sperm of one releases toxins that kill the other sperm, but in the process could damage the female's future. All of that, this is a theme that runs through a lot of the literature on sexual competition sperm competition, and there's even hints that something like that goes on in humans. Okay, so what form does it take in these deer mice as follows? I don't begin to understand the, the mechanics of this, nor do I want to, but apparently with deer mice sperm, if they all clump together, you know, many hands on the oars or something, if they all clump together, you get this macro sperm thing which swims upstream faster. And the paper had all sorts of diagrams of this, which I did not want to look at in much detail. But there's this, so you've got with the polygamous strains, you've got this problem. If your sperm want to do things absolutely correctly, they only want to form one of these big old, you know, pleasure boat aggregate crew things with sperm from themselves with sperm from only themselves and following all of our theorizing to a lesser extent with close relatives and not at all with sperm from some other guy. And that's precisely what they showed in this paper. You take sperm from monogamous strains and you put sperm from different males together and they all happily form this big cooperative clump of sperm there. But you take them from species that have evolved under the selective pressure of polygamy and the sperm there know who they're related to and will form these clumps only with the ones from themselves. You can immediately design all sorts of lock and key stories for how that's pulled off. You could immediately come up with some approximation of what the molecular mechanism would be. But for first pass, what's striking here is, ooh, how do organize, organisms recognize relatives? There are out there single cells that can do this under exactly the evolutionary circumstances models that we've got already.